Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast. As you see, Kesav is not here. But today's topic was something Kesav and me were talking about off camera and I thought I'll talk about it because one of you had messaged Kesav and uh, who's working on this concept and actually wanted my opinion on it and my views on it. So, I hope you do watch the podcast. I'm assuming that since you asked Kesav to reach out to me about it, I do assume that you're watching. That too you're watching the podcast is what I hope because you're not on the main video is the morning videos so there's this thing which case about which you had asked about is called monkey theory in stock market so what is monkey theory in stock market monkey theory in stock market is there's a very famous quote where you say you have a room full of 100 monkeys and you give all of them a typewriter and you allow them to type randomly and if you given sufficient amount of time finally they will create a shakespearean novel or they'll create the bible or whatever you want to say they'll say that the act of pure random events will finally lead to this and it's mathematical theoretical yes you can argue that yeah so the same idea was pushed into the stock market there's a theory in stock market called the efficient market hypothesis the efficient market hypothesis states that any given point of time when you see the price of a stock in the market it encompasses all the possible information is there baked into the price meaning it takes in account of the earnings it takes in account of debt it takes in account of everything possible information is all there in the market price so you cannot predict any movement in the market because all that information whatever available information is already there in the market and that's what the efficient in that thing means in the hypothesis efficient market something which is efficient means it's working at its most optimal capacity meaning whatever information is there it's digested it and it's giving the output which is the most optimum output but that's not possible because yes you can argue that up to a certain extent but the certain things which are inner challenges to this that it doesn't take into the fact that markets are not perfectly efficient markets can have mispricing misinformation can be there bubbles can be there and the inefficiencies of the investors themselves are not accounted for that is a basic problem with efficient market theory but what efficient market theory does highlight is it is very hard to beat the market yes there have been experiments not the monkey experiment wasn't actually a monkey where they had a monkey sitting and picking stocks it was just a theory it was a thought experiment but there were other experiments conducted similar to this where random stocks were picked and compared to so called uh, what do you call fund managers or as compared to their performance and seen a random stock picking can beat fund managers some of the times not all the times some of the times but what it failed to beat most of the time was the index so what was understood from that experiment was that index is a very hard thing to beat especially even if you take in the random tests which they did the reason one of the main reason they beat fund managers fund managers have expense ratio and all that and the profit taking and all that so all that is not there in the random experiment so one of the main reasons they beat the fund manager was that but the same thing is true with index investing and in beating the index is very difficult because even when you're doing a random stock picking you don't have the whole broad market in your purview which is what the index does the index takes a consolidation of the entire market and it is better at that to see the ebbs and flows of the market than randomly picking companies off a list because the index not only takes a snapshot of it it moves with it so it's very difficult to beat it so that is the real conclusion of that experiment was that that how in short term this is that even if you're picking for value on a short term basis it's difficult even fund managers find this difficult even if you go random it is difficult so the best way investment option for a nascent or a new investor was investing on the index and that too investing in the long term proved to be very successful this is what was understood from this and the person who pushed this theory first out was princeton university economist his name is burton malkel and he wrote a book called a random uh, walk down wall street it's a very nice book and i suggest you read this book i'll ask the team to put up the book cover somewhere so you guys can see what the book cover is and i'll allow them ask them to leave it on the screen for some time so you can take a note of it so he's the one who suggested this that you put a blindfolded monkey and throw darts on a newspaper financial page and select so yes in theory it's uh, very true but like i said 
markets don't work in that manner. The thing about a market is it's a the whole stock market is a very complex system. At any point of time, the sum of the parts, even if you have, let's say you understand every single unit, every single company in the market, you understand what is happening, what is creating it. And then saying the sum of it doesn't lead to conclusion of where the market is moving. The sum of the parts of the market, each constitution and company of the market doesn't lead to any conclusion also because it doesn't behave like that because it's such a complex system. And predicting such a complex system is futile. So that's why one of the main problems in trading is gambling. It's like saying I'll use a scientific method to pick which lottery numbers are going to win, which loto numbers are going to win. You cannot because it's purely act of randomness in it. And that's what prevents it from being something which you can calculate. Even if you have a supercomputer and you spend many hours crunching numbers. I'm sure there's going to be people who will argue otherwise. I'm just talking from a purely layman. For the access to what we have, the tools we have, the science and understanding where a layman like me has or you have, it is very hard to predict anything like that. So this is the main reason why the theory is very nice in illustrating trading or, you know, doing options is a very difficult thing to do because you can't predict and you can't beat the market like that. And no point of time can you look at a stock price and say it is fair value based on just the stock price and say it, all the information which can possibly make the stock price move is there in that baked into it. It doesn't work like that. So it's a very interesting book. I would suggest you read it and go ahead and spend some time. I'm sure there are uh, many websites and other videos which talk about the monkey theory in greater detail. I wanted to hit upon it just to tell you that, yeah, efficient market theory hypothesis is a great theory, but it's not uh, practically useful in the sense that based on that, use that information or use that hypothesis and draw any conclusions to your investment plan. When you're talking philosophy, when you're talking theoretical physics, theoretical maths, it's one thing. But when you're talking about practical life, you know, practical mathematics or science, it's another thing. That's why even in physics, there's two branches. Those of you who have seen uh, Big Bang would know that the great uh, comedy between Sheldon and Leonard is based on that premise that Sheldon is a theoretical scientist and Leonard is a practical scientist who sets up the experiment. So Sheldon comes up with the ideas, then Leonard comes up with experiments on how to prove it or disprove it. So that is what this is like. So efficient market theory hypothesis is a theory, but when you try and use it in practical market situations, it fails. So I hope it kind of gives you clarity on what monkey theory is about. And it's a nice theory but cannot be used for in practical purposes to invest. That's why it's better to look at value investing to see like what Warren Buffett does. That is always proven to work over long periods of time. Because for anything to grow, you need to give it time. Things cannot grow overnight. And if they do, that means there's something fishy in it. Thanks for watching the podcast, guys. I hope you found this video informative and entertaining as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully with Keso. Bye.